Connect. Have a great day. Good morning. Welcome to Sunday Connect from Elim Church Romsey. My name's Dave Walker and I'm the pastor of the church. It's good to see you. Thanks for joining us again. I'm going to be sharing the word a little bit later on um, and um, we have some fantastic worship from Ophelia and her team in just a few moments. But let's come together um, and, and just concentrate on God today. Other weeks we've had uh, children's talks and communion. We'll probably have both next week, but just today it's mainly just the worship and the word. Let's just pray before the worship starts. Lord, we thank you today for the fact that you have brought us this far. I pray that the word we hear later on inspires us, and I pray um, that the worship that Ophelia and Tim and their team uh, lead in just a few moments, Lord, really brings us closer to you. We ask, Lord, that you will do in us and through us what you want to do today. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. God bless you and enjoy the worship. Come and see. Come and see. I said, come and see. Come and see. Come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see what the Lord has done. I said, come and see. Come and see. I said, come and see. Come and see. Come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see what the Lord has done. One more time, come and see. Come and see. I said, come and see. Come and see. Oh, come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see what the Lord has done. The Lord is so good. The Lord is so good. The Lord is so good, he's so good to me. Raise your voice. The Lord is so good, the Lord is so good, the Lord is so good, he's so good to me. Sing it loud. The Lord is so good, the Lord is so good, the Lord is so good, he's so good to me. And he's kind. The Lord is so kind, he's so kind. The Lord is so kind. And he's kind. The Lord is He's so kind, he's so kind to and he's good. The Lord is so good. He's so good. The Lord is so good. Oh, he's good. The Lord is so good. He's so good to me. One more time. The Lord is so good. Oh, he's good. The Lord is so good. Oh, he's good. The Lord is so good. He's so good to me. And when Jesus said yes. When Jesus said Nobody can say no. Jesus say yes. Nobody can say no. When Jesus say yes, 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 nobody can say no. When Jesus say yes. Nobody can say no. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. 
Thanks for that amazing worship, Ophelia and team. That was brilliant. Uh, just a few notices for you now before we carry on. Uh, don't forget, live at five on Facebook today, we'll be doing communion and a bit of chat and, and sharing uh, on a few things. So uh, join us five o'clock live on Facebook. I keep saying it's gonna be the last one, but we may carry on uh, a little bit longer. Um, and of course, if it's past five o'clock now, then you've missed it already. Also, we have had our risk assessment passed at church and we're starting to just test out meeting in small groups. So we have got effectively an evening meeting tonight at church, but of course we have to sort of, um, we, you know, we've, we've got almost like a booking system. So we're starting off small, testing it. It's just a circle of chairs up to 11 maximum where we just have a Bible study and prayer. People have to wear masks and also um, there's no singing allowed. Uh, so if you, um, and we do that in the actual broadcast because there's no people there. But of course, when people are there, we can't do it. If you would like to take part in one of these meetings and you feel that you are well enough and um, you, you are not in a vulnerable category and you want to come along, then please contact me, text me. My, my phone number is in the public domain, 07928-935-798 and we can book you in. Um, but uh, as those uh, meetings get better and bigger and the rules change, we will build up to a proper church meetings again. But of course, don't give up meeting in other ways. As soon as you can meet in bigger groups in your home, please do so. So that's tonight um, for those who are booked into that. And there's probably one or two in the middle of the week as well. We're trying to sort of set them up. 
Tuesday, Zoom prayer meeting online, uh, led by Peter and Leslie, the encounter meeting. That's always good, so please join us. We have sent around the link for that. Also, Wednesday Connect, I'm doing a series on principles of the Christian life, so have a look at that. Also, our youth video on Thursday. Um, all right, so we've got quite a bit going on. But also, Peter Light has told me, and I forgot to mention this last week, that he's doing a School of the Word starting in September. This will be good. It'll be down at the church. We'll be able to get more chairs out by then, led by Peter. If you'd like to be part of the School of the Word, put Peter, brilliant Bible teacher, has got a tremendous experience um, regarding the Bible, going back for years. And uh, the last um, School of the World was popular. If you want to come to that, start of September, please let us know. Also, one final thing before I share the Word of God. Um, would you like to be part of this video? We're still carrying on the videos on for a few more weeks. So if you'd like to say a hi or a hello or share something, please send it in to me. Have your camera horizontal. Look at the camera, not the screen. Plenty of light on you and talk very loudly but preferably not it with my strange accent. I'm almost from the north, but I've been down south many years. God bless you, and uh, here's the word of God. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dave Walker. I'm the pastor of Elim Church, Romsey. I want to share something with you today that will really, really encourage you. My title is Sack Those Soldiers. Sack those soldiers. About 30 years ago, I went on a, a Christian camp um, um, with lots of other churches um, in the Midlands somewhere. I think it was the Royal Warwickshire Showgrounds, a place called Family Camp. And it was part of a, a, set up by part of a network of churches that I was in at that point. But I remember it was kind of the end of July, beginning of August 1990, one of the hottest summers on recent record. And the last day erupted in one massive water fight. This is how it started. A group of us decided to fill our buckets with water. I think there may have even been water restrictions. And we went round and we just started chucking water at everybody. It was the best fun ever. Then we got hose pipes out. And then those who were in charge of the ground itself joined in and it was brilliant and we were walking past caravans and tents and everything everyone was saying please chuck some water on me well right now i'm going to chuck some water on you i'm going to refresh you so much with this because this really refreshes me really inspires me every time i've read this in my life i've thought yes this is great and this today will inspire you i can tell you for a fact in the Old Testament, there's a book called the Book of Judges. Judges are not some people who sit there with robes and wigs on. The judges were a, peop a group of people who led God's people for a certain time. One of them was a guy called Gideon, also known as Jerob Baal. <coughs> there's a little story here which I want to encourage you with. Remember, my title is Sack Those Soldiers. We start in Judges chapter 7, verses 1 to 3. Early in the morning, Gideon and all his men camped at the spring of Harad. The camp of Midian was north of them in the valley near the hill of Moreh. The Lord said to Gideon, You have too many men for me to deliver Midian into their hands. In order that Israel may not boast against me that her own strength has saved her, Announce now to the people, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left, while 10,000 men remained. What? God's actually saying that you don't need to worry if you've not got the strength or the ability to cope or enough money or enough this, that God will use your reliance on him for him to miraculously provide. He'll use that as a future testimony to others. Guess what? That's the first bucket of water. Oh, that was lovely. Isn't that incredible that God can do that? So basically, Gideon wants to go and attack the enemies, but God's saying, no, get rid of some of your men. In fact, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So God is reducing what he has got 
just to uh, prove to everybody that God can still work even though we have not got enough resources. So he had a choice to fight with 32,000 men. You see, without logic, we, we, we'd get as much as we could, get our fighting forces together and fight, get as much of our resources, our money, our this, our that together. But God is saying on this occasion, don't worry if you have not got that. Trust God with everything. Let's go back to the story. Um, verses 4 to 5. But the Lord said to Gideon, There are still too many men. Take them down to the water. I will sift them for you there. If I say this one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water. There the Lord told him, Separate those who lap the water with their tongues like a dog from those who kneel down to drink. Now his faith is really tested. God's saying to him, look, and the best bit, the, the great thing about this is how did God speak to him? We just don't know. But he spoke to him in a way that he could understand. Um, and he's now being told to reduce his men down even more. And we've got 300 men now. He had 32,000, he's got 300 men. And in verse 7 he says, The Lord said to Gideon, With 300 men that lapped up, I will save you and, the, and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the other men go, each to his own place. When I first went into the ministry, or I was training um, to go into the ministry, I used to, I used to compare myself to other people. I would sit and watch certain Chris, Christian TV programs where there would be certain perhaps preachers who were part of big ministry dynasties and they were famous for having big strong families and six perfect sons and, and, and we're really great. My marriage is great, my life's great, my family is great, I have lots of money, therefore I am qualified to preach. And I looked at myself and thought, who am I? Who am I? I do not compare with people like that. I remember the, the, the day after my mother died, with this feeling descended on me inside. Your mother has died. No one will take you seriously as a preacher. You're not good enough. You're not as good enough as those other people. Well, thankfully, I know where that thought came from. I know that it didn't come from God. It came from elsewhere and it came from the enemy. But we can suddenly think sometimes, I need this and this and this and this and this before people take me seriously. But Gideon had now a lot less resources and God used him to attack the Midianites. How do we do things in God's strength then? What is the method? What's the way we do it? Well, I want to say to you, if God has called you to do something, then he will provide what he needs. Do not look at what you do have or what you don't have. What you have yourself is important. I remember being at the Christian Camp Soul Survivor. I'm sorry, I mentioned this in my preach last week. Um, a few a few years ago at the first one I went to. And I'm, I'm stood back, back there and, I'm, th and I'm, I'm, I'm watching Mike Pilavachi preach on the stage. And I spoke to one of our youth leaders, um, a female youth leader in our group, and I said to her, I don't know much about Mike, Mike Pilavachi. Um, um, does he have a family? Does he have a wife? And she, a wife? And she said, this woman said, no, he's, he's celibate. He's decided to devote his life to Christ completely, 100%, and even to the point of staying celibate. And I looked, and in, in the same way there's a cross behind us here, at the front of the Soul Survivor Arena, there was a big cross there. And I looked at that cross thinking, Jesus, somebody would do that for you? Somebody would devote themselves to you to such a point whereby they want to stay single? And I thought, I've, I've missed it somewhere. Not that I've got to do that, but I'm, I'm realizing there is so much more. And today I'll say to you, if you are like Gideon was with just the 300 men in the end, which, did, which wasn't 
much to take on the enemy with and you don't think you've got enough, three things I want to say to you. Number one, be honest with God. Be honest with God about where you are. So go to God and say, God, this is what I am. You know what my weaknesses are. You know what my family history is. You know about the scandals in my family. About You know about my employment history. You know about this and you know about that. And God, not many people know about these things. But here I am, as I am. Billy Graham used to say, just as I am without one plea. And you know, you know I am. And be honest with God and give yourself to God. And say, God, this, this is what I am and this is what I'm able to offer. Number two... Be open to God. Be open to what he says to you. He does not condemn. He does not judge. Um, he does not, certainly doesn't do that in the way that everybody else would. And, and, and there is a place in this world for you. Be honest with God. And, and, and secondly, walk with God. Walk with him every day. Get up in the morning and say, God, you know, I do this. I've told my um, my, my, my Christian brothers and sisters at Elim Church Romsey, I do this a lot. I get up and I, I sort of give myself to God in the morning and kneel down and say, Lord, today the, blo the, the date is, and whatever the date is, and I give myself to you 100%. I'm serving you. And when you do that, begin to walk with him throughout the day. Begin to talk with him about the things that upset you. Begin to talk to him about your dreams and listen to what he says. Be open to him. And finally, be obedient to God. Be obedient to what he tells you to do. Gideon, God wanted to use Gideon to illustrate a point. It wasn't just that he wanted... You see, God, God could have just destroyed the Midianites quite easily. Of course, he did that in the end, if you read the rest of the story, but he used, he used Gideon's few men, and it was pretty much all done for him anyway. But God didn't just want to protect him. God wanted to use him to, uh, as a testimony. When you run to God with your failures, and you run to God with your history, and you run to God with your shame, and you want protection, God won't just protect you. But because of your obedience and your willingness to be used, he will use you as a testimony to his goodness to other people. He will lift you up. He will pick you up like he did with the woman at the well when Jesus went there. And he will use you as a testimony because he is good and he is kind. And I would say to you quite simply, don't be afraid to sack those soldiers. Gideon reduced his fighting power right down. Now, God told him to do that as an illustration. He doesn't want us to chuck our stuff away. But in our humility, in our lack of ability, in, our, in the position that we find ourselves, God wants to use us as a testimony to his goodness. Whatever you have got, whatever you haven't got, God will use you. Please make yourself available to God today. Don't waste another week. I regret every moment before my, my conversion that I wasn't a Christian. And when I die, whenever that is, I will not regret one second of following Jesus Christ. I'm reaching more people with the gospel right now through this means, um, through these means uh, than ever before. Um, you know, we're preaching the gospel quite a lot and it's going out to so many people by the grace of God. Even though the coronavirus has, has, has restricted us, we're using that restriction. And if you're listening today, um, the best way to have a relationship with God is through Jesus Christ. He died on the cross to pay the price for your sins. He is real. He is miraculous. He is the God who created the universe. Jesus is the representation of God on this earth. Um, along with the Holy Spirit, of course, and he wants you just as you are. Don't compare yourself to those religious people who go to church. Don't compare yourself to somebody else or to your mother or your father who may have had a great religious, or great Christian rela relationship with God. God wants you to give your all to him. Will you do that today? God bless you. Thank you very much for listening today. And... Um, we will uh, be in touch with you throughout the week. But don't forget, don't be afraid to sack those soldiers. Don't be afraid to, to lay your abilities down before God and let him use them as he wants to. God bless you. Thank you. 
Well, thank you for joining us today. Um, God bless you. Please join us for Facebook Live at five and um, all the other things that are taking place this week, the Zoom encounter and the midweek stuff. Uh, have a fantastic week. Stay strong and positive. Keep Jesus at the center of all you do. Let's just pray. Lord, we thank you for your presence. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, for your, your, your salvation, for your word, and for the fact that you are in tomorrow before we even get there. And your promises are good, and they are yes and amen. God bless you. Have a fantastic week. Thank you.